Okay, my friends, this is video one of uh, what Graham Hancock is talking about here, is that the academics refuse to discuss anything that's against the things that they are told not to discuss, and, and, and which is leading to the destruction of our planet and the ignorance of the population. Now listen to this. We take it as an attack on us in person. That's what, I think that's fundamentally why academics reacted to me in the way that they did. I was arguing that the whole field of history and archaeology may have got the origins of civilization completely wrong, but at a personal gut level that was taken by many academics as a direct attack on them and their place in the world, and that then resulted in a counterattack uh, on me. Now the counterattacks on me would never have happened if my book had been a failure. Anyways, I'm, I'm just going to, he, he wrote about fingerprints of the gods. Fingerprints of the goods. <laughs> anyway, he wrote about fingerprints of the gods, I believe, and it was very successful, just like Velikovsky's book was, and they destroyed him. Now, I wrote a book about Velikovsky, and I called my book Minds in Collision, not Worlds in Collision. That was Velikovsky, Minds in Collision. They cannot accept it. Their minds are literally destroyed these academics because they cannot get out of their box. If they do, they're destroyed. So they have to keep doing what they're doing. And that's exactly what Graham Hancock's talking about here. And I'm going to talk about that in my mud fossils and, you know, the evidence I have for, for you know, the things that were written about the gods and, and the giants. Oh, I have them. I have them. DNA tests. I have all that stuff. Forget about that for now, because right now I want to try to save the planet. And watch what I have to say, because I think we can do it, but I have to get above the radar. Just like he says, he was above the radar, and they just didn't like it, and they tried to crush him. They forced him to take his stuff off of TED Talks, and then apparently somehow he forced them to put it back on. They had, a, I guess, a court ruling or something. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. This right now is critical, so critical you just can't even imagine how important this is what I'm about to convey to you. This is how bad academia is, and Fermi Labs and all the rest of them. I can accelerate light. That is the particle of light. Here is where the light literally splits from the black to the white, which creates what they call muons or bosons, and those are 200 times more powerful than the input energy. That means we can harvest free energy. Literally put a solar collector right there and harvest that extremely enhanced energetic value which gives you free energy. Not allowed. Fermilab won't talk to me. CERN won't talk to me. It's exactly what they want to see. I'll show you the particle and I'll show you what they want to see and I did it. This is nothing more than light. Light is light, the smallest particles we know of. That's the wave. That's the wave with the particle inside of it. Now the particle sucked out of it. This is literally the particle. That is a photon. It has black and white, not just white, which is what we always thought. It was just an energetic particle. It has dark matter attached to it. This is where I display my dark matter. And the guy finally admitted, yes, Dark matter is, we can see it now, and here's, and I can separate that dark matter from the white matter. Watch this. This is at the concussion. The dark matter separates from the white. That means this is our muons, which they have muons and electron neutrinos and so forth. Well, this is going to be the electron neutrino, I'm sorry. The black ball is the muon. The black ball is, and it stays the same. They know this. And here's, the, here's what uh, CERN says. Here's what we show. There's the photon, and here's the energetic values. These are the, the whites are energetic, the blacks are just dark matter. And here's what CERN wanted to see, and we just showed you. That was the muon, and then it didn't change at all when it concussed. And this was the electron neutrino, which was the white ball. And when it concusses, it makes the showers. So they won't even talk to me about this because they're so embarrassed to have to spend in trillions of dollars, literally, to, to do what we did for a couple hundred bucks. It, you know, it, it, it's, they've invested their life. But this one guy, I, it, it absolutely blew my mind. What, what do you hear what he had to say? Okay, I showed you my stuff. That goes back to 2016. We could be having free power right now. 
now this is just a couple of weeks ago, May 27, 2021. Dark matter findings suggest Einstein's theory of relativity may be wrong. Well, it is wrong, and they know it's wrong. And they admitted this back in 2019. Everybody came out and said, yeah, it's we got lepton universality isn't right, and this isn't right, and we can't account for the dark matter. And da, 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 da. Well, I showed everything back then, and now they're starting to admit it. It's like glacial to these people because they're afraid to admit that they were wrong. This one guy and this one kid here, to me he's a kid, is um, they're talking to, yeah, we were wrong and we're going to fix it. I hope they mean it. Now listen. Structures in this map are smoother than we expect them to be, which is what the results seem to hint at. It means that Einstein's theory is wrong. So you might think that that's a bad thing, that maybe, oh no, physics is broken. But it, for physicists, it's extremely exciting because it means that we can find out something new about the way the universe really is. All right, that kid is the most fortunate kid on the face of the planet because he can speak right now because they, are re they know they're wrong. But for somebody that's young like him to step up and say, hey, I figured this out, they just destroy him. This guy had spent his whole life and realizes I was wrong. I basically made up all kinds of stories to, to fill in all these things that never worked. And they never worked. I, I know I probably showed you this 10 times, but I, I knew this back 50 years ago. And I, I confronted my professor, and we had it really, we really had it up. Because I said, there's no way you can have a big, gigantic, positive core and a little negative. Well, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. <laughs> you don't listen. You don't think. I said, what do you mean I don't think? You're the one who doesn't think. Anyway. All right, so that's just a bad memory. <laughs> but that's 50 years of fighting for this. And finally, I, when I saw the, the research on the light and the Venturi, it was all over. I could see the particles. I could see them split. I could see photons. I could see electrons. I could see everything. Now, this guy admits he's wrong. Now, listen, this is just as rare as the hen's teeth. I don't know if they're really rare, because I, I, right now I'm questioning everything that I was ever told. Building on the work of Einstein, Carlos Frank was among a group of scientists that developed the current model of cosmology. Hearing now that there may be something not quite right with the theory, but it's very disconcerting, it's very alarming, and in a way frightening to see that maybe my whole life's work might crumble in front of me, but at the same time it is immensely exciting. Astronomers believe that we are at the start of a new revolution in cosmology that will give us a fuller understanding of how the universe began and how it will evolve. All right, exactly. And I have the electron flood theory. I probably showed you this about 10 times too. Only thing that exists are electrons. Two of them back to back make a photon. And then they grow up from there. But the next stable state is a proton at 1839 of these electrons in a ball like this. Because they are dipoles. That's a dipole. And so every one of these would be a dipole. And you have 1839, beep, it gets stable. That's a, a, a proton. Then a neutron, you just add one more, and it's 1840. That makes it a neutral particle. The proton wants to attract one more electron, but the proton already has, well, it, it will try to attract one more, but when you get to a certain mass, it'll say, I have all the electrons I want here, I have them all I want, but the dark matter will be in the center and say, come on, come on, more electrons, come on. And they'll say, no, 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 we, you stay away. We're coding this with our electrons and we won't let you in because electron to electron says no. So they will say, well, can I come close? And they'll say, yeah, you can stay right there. That's it. Five angstroms, you're okay. Come closer, and we're going to push you away. Push to shove, push to shove, push to shove. And that when you have heat, that's all it is, is push to shove of, of electrons banging around inside there and whole batches of extra tiny little electrons flowing in. That's what electricity is. That's what static is. That's what lightning is. That's what additional heat is, is additional electrons flowing in where they're not wanted. And it's just they when they're flowing down to us from the sun. That's exactly what heat is. It's just now that's just it. that's just the nature of it. And so everything consists of this. It, it, it and it, they're everywhere. The sun is emitting these particles. I showed you the particles. So th the problem is is they cannot 
step away from what they were told to say and still keep their jobs. That's the problem. That is the, we need an open forum like Graham Hancock and all of these people that are talking. But I, we need really big leaders, people. Not, to, not just fringe people like me and Graham Hancock still considered fringe. They don't want him talking. Nobody wants anybody talking. We need to have to, a couple of people like this kid step up and say, let's talk about this. We're in a new era now. And if we don't embrace it, we're frauds and incompetent liars. Literally, that's just the bottom line. Until they will step up and engage as scientists, there is no more science. Science is a dead science now. It's a dead issue. It's a follow the leader, follow the science. No, it's follow the leader. This guy is the leader. He said this. That's the way it is. And that's why we've been walking around in circles because of Einstein. I just showed you. I guess accelerate light just like that. And I can do everything Fermi wants to do instantly. And they refuse to engage. This is the issue. That is the critical issue, my friend. Now, after showing what I just showed you, if you know anybody who's a physicist, ask them if I could create a muon separated from the electron showers, would that give us ex enormous amounts of extra energy? And I believe they would say yes. And if they are correct, and I am correct, we could have a sealed unit just like this that would run your entire house, air conditioning, heating, refrigeration, TV, everything in your house, just like that. You go down and buy it at Home Depot plug your house in, you're good to go. No burning, no oil, no gas, no nothing. And then you could have a little one like this We could run your car. And I'm serious. These, all you have is light here. And if you can harvest it at the right way, at the right place, you don't need enormous areas. You need to a, a good harvesting solar plate, basically. And the, whatever hits it is converted immediately into electricity, extreme amounts. And you could run it into battery packs, all that stuff, obviously. But in order to harvest it, you don't need a big, a lot of real estate. You need a little tiny, completely sealed, never take it apart, ever. It just runs forever because the excess amount of electricity runs the laser that powers the showers, the powers, the showers, the power of shower. And this is what we have to stop. We are expanding the envelope of our atmosphere like a balloon. And the more we scrub, it's like taking the surface of the road and having a tire that cannot move away from the road. It's a, a foot away. And then you keep pumping air into it, scrubbing harder and harder and harder. And before long, it burns up. That's our tires burning up right there. Our Earth is scrubbing through space, which is 100% loaded with electrons. That's why it's electron to electron on our outer atmosphere. I'll show it to you this right now, and then I'm going to leave it at this. Somebody's got to contact me. we got to get something done with this. And, and I showed you, uh, uh, anybody that knows how to work with lasers should be able to do this. It's very, very, very simple. And it should be able to be able to be either proven yes or no within a couple of weeks. Literally. I'm not kidding you. It's that simple. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. This is what's happening. The sun is sending out particles. I showed you the particles. They're coming at us and they're hitting our particles that are on trying to glue onto our surface. When they meet, they crush, they scrub. These are pushing in, these are trying to push out. You know, they're, they're part of our, they're not trying to push out necessarily. They're being held in concordance with the earth, but they're spinning with the earth and they're scrubbing these that are trying to impenetrate the earth. Now, I show it over here as the whole part, everything's loaded with them. It's, they're everywhere. There's not just a, there's no place that isn't loaded with electrons. Now, at a certain place out in the expanse of the universe, they will be not forcing each other and glowing. Yes, that's where you can see right through them because they're not pushing and shoving and glowing. But we see pushing and shoving and glowing in space where it glows. That's because that's the radiated particles. They're forcing each other and that's oh whenever you have push to shove you have glow and i showed that in that spray of white particles and all the different things i've shown there's no mystery here 
the the space is a hundred percent loaded with particles and i just saw an article just came out a couple of months ago why is space such a perfect vacuum and they go on to explain how come it's so perfect of a vacuum ridiculous they just don't understand that light is particles